Hey, hope you're having a great day. In this video, I'm going to talk about a rapid increase in storm activity here in the southwestern and south central United States after around November 20th. We're first going to look at the upper levels and the jet stream pattern that's responsible for this. Then we're going to look at the precipitation, fronts, snowfall potential, and much more. But before we begin, if you like daily forecast updates, extreme weather event breakdowns, much more in detail than you would see on TV, hit that subscribe button. We also do long range forecasts as well. So also comment below how much snow do you have for the season so far? Kind of get a tally going in the, in the comments section. But for now, we're gonna look at the uh, 500 millibar height anomalies. Now, what are these? Well, this is measuring the uh, kind of the average temperature in the atmosphere from about zero to 500 millibars. And you're measuring heights, so the higher they are, usually you're going to get warmer conditions. There's expansion happening in the atmosphere, so those are going to be your areas in red, ridging. So and the trough's going to be the opposite with our storm system. So what I want you to do is look at uh, around the 20th here. There's ridging out west, and there's been ridging for quite a while throughout early November through mid-November, and also lots of uh, parts of uh, October as well. And there's been a lot of troughing out east. This pattern's going to change here. See this little cutoff low here? There's another one up here. What's going to happen is when this ridge starts punching in to Alaska, Canada, there's going to be some troughing that develops. Uh, and that's going to push into the southwestern United States and deliver more storm systems. You want to look for your storm systems just out ahead of these troughs. That's where your storm systems typically develop, where there's divergence up in the upper levels that stretches the air up out in the upper levels which sends up storms at the surface so you're going to see this thing come down and then you're going to see this thing come down and merge this thing will merge with the polar jet up here and deliver multiple blows of precipitation for parts of the southwestern united states you can see that ridge moving in around the 20th and look at those merge together so you have that first short wave that'll deliver a, a first little storm system around the 20th and then the main one comes out around the 21st or so and that sweeps into the central United States after about the 22nd. Then we got more coming. So there's still a little bit of ridging up here, kind of zonal look. And then there's going to be more troughing around the 24th. And then you got another one around the 25th, 26th, and then another one around the 27th. So the activity is definitely going to increase. Each of those waves could deliver a storm system for the southwestern and central United States. Now, it's not always a guarantee. There's also moisture and tons of other things involved, which we'll look at next. So definitely the pattern is there. Now, I decided to make this video because everyone always talks about the East Coast, the central U.S. So I decided to uh, give some people in the southwestern and south central United States some love here. And uh, we're going to do the precipitation next. We're going to zoom into parts of the uh, U.S. here. And, and then what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to zoom into the southwestern United States. Then what we'll do is we'll zoom into the south central United States. So we'll look at this region first as we head towards, let's go around the 20th here. This is when that little mini wave was moving out. Here's our low pressure system. And well, you're, it's not terribly strong yet. 996, decent, probably a little cold front right here. Warm front maybe up there. There's your precipitation out in Arizona. And uh, much needed for this area. Even some precipitation in California, probably with this system. This is going to be your best bet for a while here for precipitation in the southwestern United States because it could be a drier winter. As we head towards the 20th and the 21st when that main trough comes through, you can see this is around... Uh, this is the 20th at 1 p.m., 18Z. There's your, that's just, might be 12 p.m. now since it's Sanders time, but there's your low pressure system. Cold front probably going to be somewhere in there. And, uh, you know, it's a little bit harder to find these with just the thickness charts out on the western U.S., but you look for kinks in the isobars typically and precipitation along and, and north and maybe in sometimes south. But there's your low pressure system. You got a very uh, decent cold air shot behind it, just kind of right localized right in that area. Pretty cool in that area. Lots of precipitation out ahead and then snow in the upper elevations around the 20th. If we just go towards the 21st, uh, this is going to be the 21st at 6 a.m. We'll pause right here. You can actually see uh, in the upper elevations some decent snow packs. There might be enough cold air finally for the southwestern United States for the upper elevations to get some snow mixed in, um, at the very least wet snow, 
but uh, definitely some snow. And you can see some intense banding here, almost mesoscale type banding in those areas. Very interesting. And then as we head towards the 21st, that continues to move to the east. More snow in parts of Utah, Colorado, Arizona, here, and then New Mexico. Around the 21st, around 7 p.m., decent little low pressure system there. Then the 22nd, high pressure moves in, 23rd. And then uh, another wave as we head towards later in the month with another trough moving in. Plenty of snow in Utah, Arizona, even Nevada and California in the upper elevations. And it's going to cool down quite a bit in California. There's that 540 line, your average temperature being near near freezing. Now, that's probably not going to occur in the lower elevations, but definitely a big cool down as we head towards late month. This is getting kind of far out there. It's going to change quite a bit. But look at that. Another batch of snow coming into the southwest United States. And then another one as we head towards the 30th. So again, you know, right now we're just looking at the general pattern. Uh, the pattern supports more waves. So I'm not going to get too much into detail. Uh, we can do that with later forecasts. We're just kind of looking at the pattern for now. So let's go out to the 20th here. There's that first wave that moves through with that uh, little uh, cutoff low. But the main wave is going to come back through when that main trough comes through around the 21st and 22nd. You can see uh, as we head uh, towards the 21st, 22nd, decent uh, little uh, front here. There's going to be some precipitation way out ahead of it. South southerly flow. You can see those ISO bars right there. Uh, they're kind of moving, they're pointing south to north there, so you get winds kind of along that, probably southerly, across just a little bit with the Coriolis force, but it's moisture out of the Gulf. When this moves to the east, this will organize even more. But you got some snow in northern uh, New Mexico there. As you head towards the 22nd, things are going to get a little bit more intense. You can see more precipitation along that front, kind of stationary for a while until about the 22nd later in the day you can see this is much more of a, a cold front look with your low pressure system here going to be uh, your thickness gradient here so you can see those uh goes from 570 to all the way out to that 540 so that's uh the kind of the your gradient your barrel clinic zone and uh pretty uh high pressure up there so you got high pressure there low pressure there nice temperature gradient in between that follows along those isobars so a decent little uh, system here in texas around the 22nd around 7 p.m 23rd uh at zero z so that's about the 22nd at 6 p.m but you know the decent little uh system here rain out ahead of it and along and north of that warm front and even some snow in oklahoma and kansas again that's pretty far out I'm not going to get too into detail with that but at least the indication this is a pretty powerful uh, trough that's moving through. It's cut off as well. The upper levels are cut off. So sometimes you can get dynamic cooling within these storm systems. The storm systems can generate their own cold air and uh, can increase the snow potential in localized areas. So you could see some pockets of snow all throughout the southwestern and central U.S. This does not look like a major snowstorm, but it does look like some localized areas could see some intense banding as you see here on the 23rd very heavy snow pocket moving through missouri even some mixed precipitation here's your low pressure system your front's going to be kind of like that your cold front high pressure system behind it does not look terribly windy uh, but some breezy conditions behind it these isobars are a little bit spaced out i, I don't think it's gonna be terribly windy the low pressure system is really not that strong 101 09, but you're very close to the Gulf and plenty of moisture return uh, could support uh, some decent pockets of moisture within this thing and some localized banding. So that's around the 23rd, around uh, 6 a.m. or so. That moves to the east. Your high pressure comes in on the 24th, really uh, quiets things down for uh, a while there. But then you get that wave towards the end of the month. This is uh, Tuesday, the 26th. Another one moves through. As you head towards the 27th, there is a big one. This is around uh, Thanksgiving, the day before Thanksgiving. And you can see a very powerful cold front out ahead of this thing with uh, good precipitation. We're not surprised to be seeing thunderstorms out with that type of look. That moves to the east. And then another plume of moisture comes up and uh, attacks the southern United States around the 30th or so. The southeastern United States will see plenty of precipitation as well throughout the end of the month. So really the southern U.S. and central U.S. kind of in for it right now. 
Let's look at the severe weather real quick, and then the, we'll look at the precipitation amounts and snowfall. I'm just kind of curious. This does look like a uh, pretty powerful front. So this is the 27th. This is 312. It's pretty far out there. We're just going to do this for fun. Again, the main pattern was the main takeaway from this video, that the increase in storm activity looks likely for the southern and southeastern United States with this pattern. The severe weather is obviously going to change quite a bit between now and then. But we're just going to do this for fun. You get a little extra stuff on this channel. And you can see the most unstable cape. So that's going to be analyzing the most intense, really the, the highest instability in the atmosphere. And uh, it's it's really uh, it's about 1,000 plus within this area, 2,000 plus. So you could get some isolated severe weather in there. We'll look at the surface base, see if there's, yeah, there's a little bit of cape in there. So look at the upper levels real quick. So you got the instability, definitely have the upper levels, tons of shear that could uh, kick into that region. And then we'll look at the moisture, which I'm pretty sure is uh, going to be good enough. Yep. Yeah, definitely 60, 70 dues. So this will be a day we'll watch. Again, it's really far out. It's going to change quite a bit. But you can see that powerful cold front and uh, that very sharp temperature and uh, this would be a moisture gradient with those dew points and you can see plenty of moisture coming out so i definitely uh, uh you know late month i would look at uh, arkansas you know louisiana parts of texas maybe not quite in that area it's going to change quite a bit but the southern u.s there could be a slight potential for some severe weather i'd even say moderate with this type of pattern especially early on when you have that early to kind of the middle part of this pattern, when you have enough moisture coming out, eventually, you know, when the pattern really evolves and changes, I think you'll get cold fronts that hit the Gulf and kind of scour at the moisture. But, you know, after that first initial wave, there's going to be an increase in moisture in this area. That first initial wave will drag up a little bit moisture. Then the more powerful one will come in and drag up even more. That could set the stage for some isolated severe weather. So let's look at the precipitation and then the snowfall real quick here. And then the, yeah, so we'll look at the uh, precipitation, total accumulated QPF. We will uh, fast forward this kind of throughout the events here. So look at that, southwestern United States, really nothing through the 20th. Then that little cutoff low comes through, delivers a few inches in uh, Arizona, goes all the way up to the central U.S. Then that other wave moves through. Here's another one, and then another one, all the way up to the 30th here. We'll stop on the 30th and look at the totals here. As you can see, look at that, two to three inches in some areas in Arizona here. You got Utah coming in at one to two inches in some areas. Parts of California, Northern California, seeing three to five inches or so. The Northwestern United States seeing several inches as well. And then uh, parts of Texas and uh, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Arkansas two to four inches within the next couple of weeks. Lots of more precipitation coming for the southern United States and uh, southwestern, southeastern United States as well, especially early on here. There's going to be a big uptick in that area as well. So like I said, this video is really focusing on around the 20th and after. Um, definitely uh, some more precipitation in the southeastern United States before then. But let's look at the winter uh, weather here and let's look at the snowfall just for fun here this is obviously going to change don't worry about the amounts just look at the signal so obviously this area has been pretty quiet as of late but now there's definitely signal that you're going to get some snowfall and it's been pretty consistent i mean i've been paying attention to these runs for a while now this area went to worry about too much that's going to change quite a bit right here uh, that's going to move north and south and weaken and strengthen several times before we get to the storm system. So I would, you know, even though you get snow there, it, there's way too much inconsistency within this particular area. The most consistent area is going to be in your New Mexico, Colorado, Utah, and Arizona range, as we have several waves move through, particularly in the upper elevations where we are much more guaranteed cold air with, uh, you know, less pressure up in the uh, upper at atmosphere farther up in the troposphere, you're going to get lower pressures. And because of that, you're going to get colder temperatures and a much better chance for snow. The question is, will we get enough cold air where we can get storms to track across the central U.S. and bring enough cold air down? That's still in question. And I'm definitely not, I'm, you know, that's going to change almost guaranteed. So 
that is uh, what we're looking at for snow. Really nothing for the southeastern United States with those waves. Those waves that are moving through earlier before the 20th are going to be pretty slow motion, slow moving, but mostly rain. So it's going to be pretty warm out there with that rain. And uh, other than that, really not a whole lot of snow over the next couple of weeks. Maybe some in the Midwest and far northeastern United States. We're going to have to watch here. But again, the main area is going to kind of be in the Rockies, southern Rockies, out into the southwestern United States, and uh, really up in the upper elevation. So if there's an extreme storm, you know, you're talking like two feet plus, I'll definitely make a video, or a foot plus, I'll definitely make more video updates for that area. Again, the skis, you know, the people who ski, they're used to this, you know, amounts in that range, nothing, uh, you know, astronomical, but definitely a much needed increase. So with that said, if you like videos like this, hit that subscribe button, comment below how much snow you've got. We did release more daily update forecast videos like this going much more in depth than you see on TV. Also comment below if you uh, have any uh, topic suggestions that you want me to cover on this channel. I'm thinking about doing tutorials at the end of these videos, maybe make the forecast videos kind of five to 10 minutes and then have like a two to four minute tutorial at the end of the video teaching you you know basic concepts about meteorology so that you can follow along with me as i do these videos so with that said hope you enjoyed the video click that thumbs up button subscribe and we'll see you soon